What's up, Iron Horse? We're we're here today with uh, Mrs. Nevin's class, and they have lots of bean bags and floor space, and they all kind of spread out and did their thing. However, your class does it. You know that's what you want to do. The the posture is inviting this dignified. I I call it. The, the nobility of kings and queens like you're you're regal you know you're putting dedicating this time to your practice to yourself to your to your health to your happiness so hopefully you found what works for you you're settled in and before we start I had to do an update on blue if you missed that sit the first week of mindfulness he got this really bad cancer diagnosis and they were going to they wanted to put him to sleep and being a science teacher I wanted to control the variables and see if I could treat it with you know, eastern herbs and different foods and the, I don't know the first month I was coming and there were weeks I would come and he hadn't eaten for a week so it was super heavy and if my mindfulness sits weren't as you know light or whatever that probably was what was going on but I know I mentioned it early in the year how bad it was and He's had a full recovery, and he was running instead of walking today, his whole big, big walk we do. So I just had to share that. And it brings to mind, like, mindfulness is great on a Friday for 10 minutes. Like, yeah, easy, kind of. Well, not easy, but it's when the going gets tough in your lives, when you're faced with things that are incredibly hard, like what I just described. I use the practice to kind of settle my mind and not get stuck in thoughts where I think everything's going to be the worst thing ever. And so I hope I offer that to you, that what this practice can give to you. If, if I could come to work every day when my, you know, leaving my dog like that, that, this should be able to help you too. So thanks. So I promised early in the year that we would start to be doing, you know, start to do some more advanced things, and I think we're ready. From the rooms I've been in. So start to follow the breath, and I'll do a reminder. If I go six breaths without thinking of something new or old, that's pretty good. So I don't know how your thoughts are, but open your mind to the idea that those are just thoughts. And when you remember that you're sitting here in a room full of your friends, teachers, that you're training your awareness on something. Could be the temperature of the room, could be your skin, could be the feeling of the chair. So find what works for you and start to focus your mind on that, your, your, your awareness. Now I'm trying to clear my mind and just focus on my breath in the chair. The practice today, the more advanced practice, is called the noting practice. So train your awareness and follow what works for you. And when you notice that you're in a story, in a thought, you're going to name it. So if you were like judging yourself, like how you're doing this right now, and you notice that's just a thought, it's not true, it's just a thought. So then you note that as judging, judging. You say it in your head. And then that's like your reset coming back to your focused awareness. If it's something that happened yesterday that you're thinking about, then you, you say past, past. I 
I just got stuck with just how happy my dog was running, you know? So I'm going to say happy, happy, and then come back to my breath. So you name it twice. You note it. it's a physical thing and also you can name it like I wanted to move my foot so I said moving moving and then I came back to my breath So as we kind of finish up today, I usually do this more towards the end of the year, but it feels like people are really doing well with this. And so I wanted you to know that we, the more you can note the thoughts and come back to the breath, the more, I, I don't want to call it control, but the more, the less power those thoughts can have. question I'll leave you with is are you or are we our thoughts are you your thoughts so finish with that so it's kind of coming out of the practice of focusing on awareness and now you're thinking of that question and be like kind of like a homework assignment and I'll share my observations about what thoughts are to me and go as deep as you want what are thoughts? Do they define you? Are they you? And what exactly are they? You know, it's a pretty deep question. So I look forward to hearing how that goes for you. And we'll see you next week. Peace.